It's a shot of the outside of the Campus Recreation Center, where we are for Deck Pass Live, presented by Xfinity at the 2019 Toyota US Open. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff Cummings. And I'm Caitlin Sandino. And this has been a great three days so far at the US Open. Everything is really getting intense. We're less than 200 <laughs> days away from the Olympics. Everybody is got that tunnel vision now, I think. Definitely, and you, you said it from the beginning, it's been very exciting from the start. There are a lot of swimmers here. We're talking 1,300 yeah. swimmers. We have heaps of Olympic medalists. We have 36 different countries that are represented here, which like kind of blows my mind. Yeah. A lot of people are here fine-tuning, getting ready for the big show. And this is the perfect time to really get that fine-tuning down because as we know, as athletes, the holiday training comes up in a couple of weeks. You hunker down for those two weeks and you do nothing yes. but swim, eat, sleep, lift some weights and, and repeat. Right. I always love December, beginning December, because it was taper yeah. and it was like the fast meet of the season. And then I got so excited for Christmas. And then like, and like Christmas night, it was like, oh, dun, no. dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it was like Christmas training, just yes. oh, the brutal time, like three workouts a day, but you gotta do that work, you gotta put it in now. I and I think too, knowing that Olympic trials are less than 200 days away, that motivation is, you know, re-hyped up. You're yeah. re-energized, rejuvenated, and ready to go. I mean, this is what you've been training for for quite some time. I know, and a lot of these athletes here are really trying to make statements about themselves saying I need to be I'm kind of going to be the one that is going to be a factor for making the Olympic team Definitely. while some of the more established stars are still trying to say don't count me out just yet so it's going to be a lot of fun to see what we can kind of take away from this meet. Yeah, definitely. It's an interesting time of the season, too, for our college swimmers, because obviously we have a lot of college athletes that are swimming fantastic. They have a great shot at making the Olympic team, but they're still, you know, co college is their priority, putting up those fast times in season. They're gonna have NC2As, and they're gonna have to bounce back off of that and get ready for the Olympic trials. Yeah, so a lot of our pro athletes are here getting ready for that final push to Olympic trials. One of them is our first guest of the night, and you, all we have to do is just really just show our feet, and you know who Guess it is. Guess who it is. The Crocs of <laughs> Lily King. I really like that design there. That's just, that's just really cool there. I, sure. And I, I think you had said earlier you want to kind of get her a sponsor for those yeah, things. Yeah, my mission is to get this girl, Lily King, a Croc sponsor. How do, I mean, come uh, on, Crocs, you are you it. listening? We talked about it at Golden Goggles. We have. And she was throwing down that she'd wear high heel Crocs, too. It's an option. I did, I did. In <laughs> the fifth grade. Oh, I did. I wore high heel Crocs in the fifth grade to my fifth grade graduation, and they were pretty cute. I'm not going to lie. They were I not. I need a picture. Can we They were like little black and white wedges. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Lily King, there? everybody. There I'm here. Hello. <laughs> here she is in her Crocs and all. <laughs> Champion of the 100-meter brushstroke tonight. Yes. Fantastic. So when we were sitting yes. with breaststroke legend Brendan Hansen, and oh, he yes. was like, she's going to throw down a 105 high. I just know it. And then <laughs> you dropped the 105. Was a six? Yeah. And he's like, oh, <laughs> you should Brendan. What's he up? Too well. <laughs> yeah. He actually, he sent me a birthday card when I was 12. I don't know if he knows that, but he did. Oh my gosh. He did. And I, my mom did not sign it. It was definitely him. <laughs> we'll have to talk to Brendan amazing. about that. I know. Yeah. I don't know if he remembers that. But did, that was how, me. I was that kid. How did, you, how did that happen? Did you like reach out to him, write him a letter, say it's going to be my birthday so, or something? So, you know, this is going to be like, so my coach's brother <laughs> lived with Brendan for like a hot second, Texas. Okay. So okay. I think that's how we made that that's happen. That's great. But yeah. I think or that, my mom signed it. I don't know. I think that was the start of everything. <laughs> Definitely. You got a sure. birthday card from Brendan Hanson. That's really cool. That's really cool. So we've been talking about this being less than 200 days away from Olympic trials and everything. Is it kind of tunnel vision now or do you do you kind of get out of that a little bit? I know you you just you're still doing are you still doing some student teaching or is it really just training? I am I'm done. I'm actually a graduated student. Yay. So I made it everyone I made it. nobody thought I was going to do it, but oh, I no. did. Haha. Ha. I can do it, you can too. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the tunnel vision's really going to start like January 1 for me. Um, cuz that's definitely thinking about it but uh yeah i think that's probably going to be the big day where i'm like all right time to go so are you happy with tonight's performance yeah definitely um anytime i go 105 yes. like i'm <laughs> i'm good with that so i think I, that was like right on my in season best so um yeah i'll take it it's good well let's take a look because i thought it was a fantastic race yes. from start to finish let's walk us watch. through this race if you don't right. mind and in, in my head thoughts, holy crap, holy crap, it's long course. I've been swimming short course meters the whole time. All right, Lily, That's don't, a really long don't dive pull. in with your jacket on. Okay. Oh, man, what am I swimming? Oh, yeah, it's the Hunter Brushstroke. Here we go. Don't lift your head. Ray's going to yell at you. Spin, 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 spin. 
Where am I going? Oh, I hit the 25. Might be okay. Did you feel strong the entire race? I did not know where I was the entire really? race. I was like, I don't know. I was really like kind of nervous and antsy before we dove in and I don't know. And you're kind of known for that little lucky look that you take. Were you seeing people during this race? <laughs> a little bit. I like to use my peripheral vision. <laughs> Very strong peripheral vision. <laughs> <laughs> then I hit the wall and I'm like, okay, don't die. Don't die. That's pretty much all I tell myself. I mean, that's, yeah, because when, when you don't do long course, this is a long way to go. It's a long way. Um, it's weird because the 100 short course breaststroke is like completely pain free. Like, it's like a 50 free. I don't feel anything. I get out and I'm like, all right, let's go again. And, Long course, it hurts so bad. Um, and I've been swimming short course meters so much with ISL, and now I'm doing long course, and it hurts a lot more. So, so talk us into the yeah. finish here, Lily, because what's very important is the timing. Where do you start lining up for this timing? I think a lot of young swimmers right. can take good points from this. Yeah, um, honestly, I don't really know. Jeez, I gotta, Lily, you're killing me. I, mean, I, I don't know. I just do it. So it that was it's a, a good feeling. finish. Yeah, you just know. Like you have a sense there's of the where wall. It is. I know where it is. Yeah, you'll you, get there. Do you count your strokes at all? No, I don't think that much. <laughs> Just, I, when you're good, you're good, you're good. Yeah, just it just happens. Got time. Got time. Got time. So fast. That's all you got to do. That's it. No secret formula. <laughs> oh, so I got to see you a couple weekends ago at yes. the Golden Goggles. You looked amazing. Thank you. You took home your first golden, no, second golden goggle. Third, fourth. You have so many I can't you, even keep up. Fourth, yeah, yeah, she's taking them a lot. I think it was but, but up there with yeah. a really special relay. Yes. I'm so proud of you, and I love the speech that you had. Oh, what thanks. did you enjoy the most about the Golden Goggles? Um, I don't know. I just like, like getting to see everybody dressed up is super fun. Um, and just like we don't get to get together that often, so we'll yeah. see each other at you know it meets like this or at pro swims, or and then we're together for probably about a month out of the year at whatever big meet we have that summer. And the rest of the year we don't really get to see each other, so uh, it's just kind of like getting together with your family before yeah. Thanksgiving. So yeah, exactly. uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And you almost got stuck in LA. I was gonna keep her in oh California. I got stuck. Which I know I was gonna move in with you. But. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, um, our flight got canceled the day we were trying to leave, and. Uh, yeah, Zane and I didn't get rebooked until 24 hours later. So, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it was, it was a pretty good travel day for us. <laughs> I know was. a lot of people with golden goggles. That the big issue is making sure that you can find a good place to train because right. you know you got to keep that that going. You can't just say, oh, I'll take a day off and everything. <laughs> right. You know, was that is that pretty easy to do to be able to say, okay, this is where I'm going to do my training while I'm off in California. I think so. Well, when you don't have a flight delay, they usually have a plan for us in sure. place. Um, so yeah, we swam at SC for a couple days, and I was out there for the for the NBC photo shoot. So I, yeah, I was I was there swimming there, and then we swam at Santa Monica Swim Club on our little uh, travel day. <laughs> so yeah, it was good, but. Luckily, we know enough people out there that we can kind of find a place to swim. So, yeah. And I think that weekend, too, wasn't that a house divided? Wasn't that Indiana versus Michigan with your brother, football? I think so. Yeah, yeah. it was. And we got smacked. But, like, yeah. you, like we knew <laughs> that was going to happen. Did your brother talk a lot of, like, trash during that or not really? <sighs> he tries, but he can't talk trash with me because no, I'm the queen of talking trash. That. Yeah. I think he should learn that by now. Yeah, he should know. He should know. I, will, I want to go back to you were talking about you had like that big NBC Olympics day with the mm -hmm. photo shoots and everything. What have you learned about doing all that stuff as a professional athlete, having these obligations that was just kind of new to you in 2016? And, and you know, as you were going through, you were still in college and now yeah. you're a pro, more obligations going on now. So what have you learned in that process? Right. Um, honestly, like I've just been super busy the last couple weeks um, with ISL and then with I don't even know. And then I have like <laughs> really wait, busy ISL, and then Golden Goggles, and then Thanksgiving, and then this, and then next week I have another photo shoot, and wow. then I have Vegas for ISL, and then Christmas is right after that. So it's like boom, 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 and you just kind of gotta, you know, yeah, horsey blinders on and gotta do the work. So any but, training camps? I don't know. I don't think so. No. <laughs> I don't even know my plan after Christmas. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> January 1st, that's all January you January 1st. January 1st, like Olympics, and uh, I have no plans after that. So. <laughs> and, and, and there was a lot of racing that you've been doing this fall. Are you going to keep doing that as you get closer to Olympic trials and the Olympics? I hope so. Um, again, I really <laughs> genuinely don't know my plan after this. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep racing. I love racing, and it's better than training, so oh, I'm might sure. as well. Yeah. <laughs> Although it's, I, I can see every day from Cody's vlog, you guys have a blast every yes. day. Oh, yeah. I'm very much myself in front of the camera. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that at all. I've become my true self. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, we have a blast. We have such a good group there, and um, the cameras are always on. I feel like we have our own reality show, which is what I've always wanted. Perfect. So it's good. Yeah, it's fun. A reality show with cool. a Croc sponsorship. Yes. There we go.
All right, Lily, thank you so much for joining. Congratulations on the great swim tonight. And we're going to be looking forward to um, seeing what happens after that page turns on January 1st. January 1st, who knows? <laughs> thank right, you, Lily. So Lily's 100 breast was not just the only great racing we had. We had a lot of special great, not just from people who have made the Olympic team like Lily, but a lot of up and comers who are going to be making some big statements. And yeah. We're going to show you some of those highlights right now, starting with that men's 200 freestyle. Townley Haas, the world championship silver medalist from 2017, didn't have a very good world championships in 2019, but he is really making a statement in this race here. He kind of laid back a little bit, which is very against what he does in the tour. For he usually takes it out really hard, but I think he was really kind of trying out a new new race plan here, and I think it kind of worked out well. So you kind of see here that. Um, yeah, that's Townley in lane number five, fifth from the bottom. And I think probably he was a little nervous about Dean Ferris just kind of going out really fast. But, you know, that's one of the things that makes Townley a great swimmer is he doesn't get nervous about this kind of thing. And you can see he's kind of make, starting to inch his way up more and more and more and more and more. And, you know, I think probably the fact that, you know, he's got his eye on him looking this way is going to really help him in this last 50. And what I really, I think, Caitlin, what you probably know is, look at that, Townley's turns are getting a lot better. Definitely. I feel like this is the strongest that I've seen Tally in a while. Um, but I was also very impressed and very impressed with Zach Apple uh, tonight and last night. Last night breaking 50, uh, breaking 22 for the first time in his 50, and then throwing down a really great second half on his 200 tonight, giving some of that you know pressure to Tally Haas. But some very incredible swims. What we talked about earlier was very impressive time. Uh, again, we were sitting next to Brendan Hansen during this race. He's like, all right, I need some guys to throw down a 146. A 145 would be awesome. So to see this incredible swim put together at this point of the season, he's got to really yeah. build his confidence coming into the next six months. Right, so there's Town Lee Haas in the middle, Dean Ferris on the left, and right on the other side, Zach Apple running them down. Yeah, I think that is really finish. inspiring for Zach because, you know, he's been known mostly just for his 100, and, yeah. you know, with the 200 free being so stacked in the United States, he's going to have to really step up, and he really did. Yeah, I mean, so put yourself on a relay, you know? Like, yeah. get top six at Olympic trials, and you could be on one of those iconic U.S. relays. So great swims across the board there. Absolutely. And then one of the real exciting races of the night for me was going to be the women's 100 backstroke. The world record holder, Reagan Smith, was going to be there, but right next to her was that lady we just saw, Phoebe Bacon, who's 17 years old and is a rising star, had a great swim at, at U.S. Nationals this past August. And we knew Reagan wasn't going to be in her top form. We knew we weren't going to see a 57 out of her. But I think... Phoebe Bacon kind of took advantage of that and said, if I could just swim with Reagan, I'm going to have a great swim. And so Phoebe is fifth from the bottom, and Reagan is to her right right now. So you see there's Reagan on the left and then Phoebe on the right. You see, Phoebe has a little bit of a lower turnover. I don't know if that um, is something that she's going to fix, kind of have a higher <laughs> turnover, but it worked tonight. And here's that finish. It was so close decided by just a few hundredths of a second. Like, I mean, look at this finish. I think what you had mentioned, you know, all eyes were on Reagan Smith, but it was a very competitive field in general. You have a, yes. um, Olivia Smalika in there as well, but Fee Bacon, 17 years old with the win tonight. And then one of the real rising stars, if you say so, <laughs> Tori Husk. Smoke. <laughs> she was out there in lane number one, and I kind of thought she would do something, but I thought, did she have a poor prelim swim or is she just not really rested? And actually, I'll tell you the truth. When I was watching this race, I was so focused on Farida Osman in lane number four and Kelsey Dahlia in lane number five because I thought those two were going to be the ones to take it to the field in the last 50. But then there's Tori Husk here coming in the last 25 and right there in lane number one, just really good. She broke Mary T. Maher's um, national age group record this past summer. Yeah. And she lowered it. She broke it, even it again today. And it's her last day being 16. I so know. turns 17 tomorrow and goes in with a new U.S. Open record and a new national age group record. Also, swimmer at tonight's amazing finals. We hey have Nick Fink with us, How's who competed going? in the men's 100 brushstroke. Congratulations oh, yeah. on a nice, solid swim today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. field you're in. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I was just like. Who's who of brushstroke there? Yeah. I mean, we were trying to figure out what it was going to take to make it back in the top eight and like we were kind of scared with what Fast. numbers we were coming up right, with we we're like right. oh is it going to be like double o double o like mid low like we didn't know but uh yeah no it was it was really fast really deep um i mean every event at this meet like all the b finals are loaded and you're yeah. like how do these guys miss the a final and then you realize the a final's loaded so yes. 
Yeah, no, it was it was definitely super fun just being in the A final and and getting to race all those big names. Yeah. And are you happy with your time tonight? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was um, best. <laughs> when you could almost break a minute yes. in season. Really <laughs> yeah, good. it was a little. If it was a hair yeah. faster, it would have been a lot right. better. But uh, no, I'm definitely happy with that. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not usually that that fast, uh, even at this time of year. So, yeah, I'll definitely take it. Uh, and I was right there with with everybody else. So. Well, we just been talking about. It. Let's go ahead and take a look at this race. It was right. like you said, it was stacked. I mean, three, two of your training mates at yep. Georgia, Andrew Wilson, and and there you are. <laughs> there I am. Nice little wave. Tell me about that wave. Well, uh, it's just, uh, I don't know. Is it a thing? Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> Is it a shout out to anybody? Not in particular. Uh, I just kind of wanted to be goofy with it, but uh, <laughs> And I yeah. think that's a good way to, to approach it. <laughs> yeah, no, I usually do. I usually do something behind the blocks just to make sure Keep it fun, keep it loose. Uh, you know, it is it is a sport, so you're supposed to have a little fun. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so there you are, third from the top, and uh -huh. and it, you're known for not taking it out super hard. So yeah. I, I would imagine when you turn, you weren't too nervous about. No, I, I had him right where I wanted him. Yeah, the whole heat. So <laughs> you no, say that now, but did, was that the truth? <laughs> no, it was it was good. I felt I felt nice and smooth going out, and I wanted to be like in and out of the turn, you know, super fast and, and just build that last 50. And, uh, you know, Cody was next to me and I could see the splashes of, you know, his strokes, but I couldn't see him. So I knew he was close by. Right. Um, you know, at this point, I'm feeling actually pretty good. I'm like, I must be going at least, you know, 58, 57, <laughs> something like that. Um, so when you see the double O, you're like, wait, what? Oh, yeah. Wrong lane, that's not me. I was like, I, I knew I won this. And I turned around like, oh, fourth, though, OK. No, but uh, no, it was definitely it was definitely a fun race. And I felt really good. So I'm definitely happy with that time. And uh, yeah, you know, no complaints. And does that pump you up for tomorrow's 200 breaststroke? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The 200 is definitely the bread and butter. So um, yeah, you know, being able to have that speed right now. And I know I've been putting in the endurance work recently. so. Yeah, the 200 should be should be a lot of fun, and it's just as deep too. So there's you know plenty of big names to race. And you, um, you know, you're more of a 200 guy, like you said. I mean, how much of your training is devoted to the 200 as opposed to 100? Um, you know, it's 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 definitely a mixed bag, just because I think having speed, at, especially at the end of the 200, and like easy speed at the beginning, uh, the first 50 of the 200 is important. And I think you do that by training the 100 a little bit, um, and then in the 100, you know. You want to be able to go out fast and like bring it home really fast, but that requires a lot of endurance too. Right. So uh, it's like definitely a, a good a good mix of the two. I, I tend not to focus on one. Um, and I also don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. I, I think um, you know spreading it out, good good hundred work and good two hundred work now and then I think keeps it balanced. So obviously you put in a lot of work in the pool. What do you do outside the pool? What kind of is your distraction outside of swimming? Uh, wow, that's uh, <clears throat> um, I. I don't know. I, I try to relax a lot. Um, mm -hmm. You know, watch TV, play video games, watch sports. I follow a lot of sports. Um, Georgia football plays tomorrow. Oh, and, big day for you. And that's going to be tough to uh, try to, you know, put the blinders on and do a 200 breast. <laughs> well, it's just a few miles away. That yeah, game's oh, exactly. Right yeah. And, you know, I've had friends like, oh, like, we would come see you swim. But and I'm like, uh, I totally get it. Like, I don't know why you would even think to come see me swim. Like, yeah. we, we, we have more important things going on. But uh, what's your prediction for the game? Uh, you know, it just, you know, I, I don't want to say that we're going to blow them out, but it's going to be, it's going to be a, a romping for sure. Right. No, we're going to, we're going to, it's going to be, it's going to be a fun game. I think our uh, defense will keep it close and, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll so, be fine. That's really cool. I, I think it's going to be a really fun game. So yeah. you, fo you, co you follow college football a lot. Mm -hmm. We know your dad's senior VP of the NBA. Mm -hmm. Are you a big follower of professional basketball, or do you kind of just stay away from that and just like, Dad, that's your area? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I definitely love to follow it. Um, and I love I love talking with him about it, too, because um, I don't know if my mom likes watching all the basketball games, so he likes to talk <laughs> talk with me about it, too. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's, it's just you grow up in a house where you're, you know, neutral to every team. You know, you can't root for a team in particular. Oh, yep. Um, but it's it's actually fun just to just sit down and watch um, some good basketball. Um, yeah. What so are some of the most memorable events that you got to go to yeah. um, in the basketball world? I've been to some all-star games, so oh, that's pretty okay. fun. Um, when I was when I was younger, I was a ball boy at uh, the All Star Game, so I got to feed Kobe. You no know, way. it's oh. yeah, That's you know, it, cool it happens. So. <laughs> so now Kobe can say Nick Fink gave me the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's what Kobe tells everybody. Yeah, I think I so too. I heard him I say think, it. On he knows interview. that now. Oh, no, no, uh, know. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and it's okay to name drop, but you know, who else? I'm, I'm sure you've met a lot of great 
basketball stars. I mean, it must be really cool to just be that close to, to those kinds of sports celebrities. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. It was, it's definitely, uh, you know, those are definitely some fun moments, especially when, you know, not <clears throat> not every, every basketball game is, uh, you know, um, kids get to go down and be on the court or anything like right. that. So I'm definitely, you know, been lucky. But, uh, you know, I've also, as, as a ball boy, got, you know, when you're not, when you're not looking, the, the balls bounce on your head, too, and you kind of make a fool of yourself. So I've had those moments as well in front of in front of the, the big stars. So <laughs> so are you allowed to claim a favorite team, or do you, like you said, you have to be pretty neutral there? No, you have, no, like, I'm, I'm neutral. Uh, you know, go go win. go NBA. So, <laughs> yeah, so. That's, your dad's happy to hear that. <laughs> so uh, did you have any big plans for Thanksgiving last week? No, actually, uh, I just went home for like three and a half days. Um, just with uh, mom and dad, uh, sisters overseas, so she didn't, uh, she wasn't able to come back. But um, yeah, it was just like you know, three three people and the dog, I guess. So four, uh, and then um, <laughs> yeah, just got to hang out and, and get away from Athens for a little bit. But I didn't want to miss too much of the training or anything like right. that, especially getting ready for this meet and uh, the ISL final in Vegas. So definitely. So do you go train with your club team when you're back home? Uh, I train by myself. Oh. Uh, club team's pretty crowded, and I usually make an appearance. Uh, yeah. But I. Yeah, and, and I like to kind of just do my own thing. And um, I, I can do it for a few days. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, when it gets to like being a, a whole week or even more on your own doing doubles and like full training, I'm like, you know, you, you kind of lose your, your brain a little bit. But uh, yeah, just a couple of days is, is not too bad. Right. You need somebody there with you. And you, you've got a lot of great people there. I mean, the, the breaststroke group there, I think I saw a photo once of like the four breaststrokers. It's stacked. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like all of you guys, it's like like the four of the five fastest breaststrokers in history to train at Georgia. It's like you and Cordis, Chase Kalish, too, and Andrew. Down. I mean, yeah. I, I know you guys are really cool off off, off deck and everything mm -hmm. like that, but does it, re, does it ever really get super competitive in those sets? Um, I wouldn't say, like, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's competitive. Like, we try to obviously push each other, and, and I, I mean, having them there is great. Um, I had some pretty good training partners in the past, but, you know, having those guys, especially being on the same schedule as you, um, because if you're training with the college team, you know, they're doing their own thing. But right. having these guys, you know, every day doing what you're doing, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's, like, super competitive. Like, if, if someone beats me, you know, I'm like, hey, good job. Like, because I know that yeah. you pushed me. You know, I, I'd rather have someone there ahead of me pushing me than, than not. Um, but, yeah, also, like, you know, we're all, com you know, uh, competitive alcoholics. So we, like, all, you know, like to win and everything like that. So, um, you know, we, we all have our days. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that group, I'm so happy to have them in that's Athens. Great. It's it's an unbelievable. Group, yeah, it's going to be great. So, like Lily said, January 1st is kind of that moment for her where she starts to really get serious about being the Olympic year. Is that, mm -hmm. that the same for you, or has it already happened? Um... I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's like a, a cutoff date or anything like that. Um, it's been kind of, you know, I don't know. It's kind of laid back. You know, you kind of want to have fun with it, and, sure. and you also have to, you know, understand the gravity of, of, you know, what we're trying to accomplish and everything like that. It's it's good having a group around that. You know, we all we all push each other every day, and um, you know, you want to stay focused. You want to stay. You know, on top of everything, but um, yeah, I wouldn't say there's like a certain deadline or anything like that. Um, you know, I'm very happy with the progress I've made, so I kind of want to keep doing the same thing. Um, yeah, this year. Yeah, and importantly, have fun. Yeah, yeah of course. That's a big thing. Well, Nick, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Good luck tomorrow on your 200. Thank you yeah. very much. It'll be great. So you watch Nick by. tomorrow on that 200 breaststroke here at the Toyota U.S. Open. We're gonna have a lot more <laughs> superstar. Simone Manuel is gonna be in that 100 freestyle. We won't have world record holder Reagan Smith in the 200 backstroke, but I think she's swimming the 200 butterfly. So that's gonna be great to watch. We're gonna have a lot of swimming that is going to set the table for what's to come in 2020. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. We're going to be back tomorrow on Deck Pass Live, presented by Xfinity at 9.15 p.m. Eastern here on USAswimming.org. Don't want to miss it. We're going to have Melanie Margallis and Andrew Wilson. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.